This is a mandarin, but also maybe a tangerine, satsuma, or even a clementine. They're the puff daddy of citrus. Seriously, pick a name, Diddy. And did you know that oranges, grapefruits, and lemons are all hybrids of this little cutie? You'll learn what that's all about, the history of mandarins, and so much more in this easy to peel episode of What Am I Even Eating? Like other citrus, mandarins are technically a berry. Other berries include avocados, bananas, cucumbers, and even grapes. Yep, even grapes. They look like small oranges that got squished a la kids in the hall. I'm squishing you. An average mandarin weighs a bit more than half of an average orange. They are sweeter than oranges with a thinner skin that is much easier to peel. But how exactly mandarins got their name is a little unclear. The word dates back to the 1580s and may have been inspired by the orange robes worn by Chinese court officials, or the Portuguese word mandarim with an M, or the Dutch word, which I'm totally gonna mess up, mandarin, hmm, probably said it wrong, <laughs> sorry. China-Portugal relations date all the way back to the 1500s during the Ming Dynasty. The Portuguese worked closely with Malay people who referred to these bureaucrats as mentari. The Malay got that word from the Sanskrit word mantri. The connection between the words mantri to mentari to mandarim is fairly clear. Naming the fruit, not so much. I mean, it's also the dominant Chinese language, called so because it was the official court language. Their classification is just as fuzzy. And if I'm being honest, the only time I like citrus to make things a little fuzzy is when it involves tequila. But here we are. Mandarins belong to the species Citrus reticulata. This group includes too many varieties and commercial hybrids to even name. They are one of the original citrus species that evolved in the wild. The ancestor of modern mandarins grew around China and other parts of East and Southeast Asia. In fact, studies believe that they have existed in China for more than one million years and they were domesticated twice around the foothills of China's Nanling Mountain region, where wild mandarins can still be found. Here's a good example of where things get fuzzy, and not just because I had tequila. Some classification systems recognize tangerines as its own species, and some see them as a variety of mandarin. Tangerines came to be recognized as a distinct fruit when grown around tangiers in Morocco. In fact, the word tangerine was originally an adjective meaning from Tangier. In the US, tangerines are hybrids of mandarins and pomelos, but grouped with mandarins as far as data goes. Satsumas are also considered mandarins. That was initially developed in Japan. In fact, oranges, grapefruits, lemons, and even Meyer lemons and bergamots are all related to the wild mandarin. And many of today's commercially important citrus fruit is too. While we may have cultivated mandarins some 80,000 years ago, the earliest hard evidence dates back to about 4,000 years. There is a recording of mandarins being gifted to Emperor Yu the Great around 2200 BC. They reached the West around 1805 when diplomatic missions to China brought trees back to England. From there, they made their way to Italy. Around 1840, Italian immigrants brought mandarins to the port of New Orleans. Mandarins then made their way to the state's great citrus regions, California and Florida. Like lemons, mandarins were likely affected by the state's great freeze, Florida's great freeze, making the Golden State the primary grower. In fact, you should watch my video on the history of lemons to learn all about that. Gifting mandarins isn't just for Chinese royalty. In Canada, they're a Christmas tradition. Japanese immigrants popularized the fruit in the Great White North around the late 1800s. It's Japanese custom to gift mandarins around the new year as a symbol of good fortune. And the tradition spread amongst the non-Japanese population across the country. The world produces over 30 million tons of mandarins a year. Most come from China, Europe, Turkey, Japan, and the United States. They are the second most grown citrus in the world. Oranges hold first place. Most US grown mandarins hail from California, with about 67,000 acres, and some from Florida with about 8,000 acres. How does that compare? California has 51,000 acres of lemon groves, 600 acres of limes, 9,000 acres of grapefruit, and 140,000 acres dedicated to navel and Valencia oranges. Tulare County is the largest growing region, which accounts for 40% of all fresh mandarins, followed by Kern, Fresno, Madeira, and so on. 
mostly the San Joaquin Valley, where 92% of all mandarins are grown. We grow a lot of food here in California, all over California, literally 50% of the nation's produce. Farming mandarins begins with laying out the orchard and planting the saplings. Depending on the variety, an acre can hold between 100 and 300 trees. Mandarin varieties common to California outside of tangerines and satsumas are the pixie and the gold nugget. The trees can get about 25 feet tall with small glossy leaves and the main branches are thorny. About 2% of mandarin trees do not survive the first year and will be replanted. Within the first three years, all sucker branches are removed to ensure growth of the fruit bearing branches. Further pruning is even needed, but fruit is usually marketable after the third year of growth and the orchard is fully mature by year seven. A single tree can produce up to 200 pounds of fruit every single year. Mandarins are often eaten fresh, but they can be found canned and in fruit cups. they are also great juiced or dipped in chocolate. Here's a quick recipe. Peel and separate the segments removing as much of the pith as you can. Microwave your favorite chocolate chips in a microwave safe bowl, 10 seconds at a time until fully melted when stirred. Mix in a bit of vegetable oil, dip or fully coat the segments and let them dry on parchment paper. But don't toss out those peels. 40% of food grown in America is thrown away and you can use these up. Dry the peels and use them for marinades, spice rubs, baked goods, homemade teas, and you can candy them. You can dip them in chocolate also. Depending on the variety and the location, Mandarin season can vary, but generally speaking, citrus season is from September through June. However, some orange varieties are still in season come summertime. Mandarin trees are evergreen, and while they slow down in the winter, a lot like me, they still do stuff a lot like not me. Buds begin to develop around the same time as harvest, so mandarins are hand harvested to protect the next season's crop. This is skilled labor. So think a farmer. Thank the people, any people who are watering, growing, or picking your food. It's hard work and it's very important. It can take a team of farm workers over a few hours just to harvest an entire bin of lemons. Around spring, bloom occurs. This lasts for several weeks. After bloom, is fruit set where fertilized flowers develop fruit. Mandarin trees are typically self-fertile and often covered with a special netting to prevent pollination. This also keeps them seedless. Fruit continues to develop over the summer and fall, depending on the variety. Mandarin oranges do not ripen once picked. This means they are non-climactric. Climactric fruits continue to ripen after picking, like avocados, which only ripen once picked, or bananas. Others include apples, pears, peaches, and mangoes. Other non-climactric fruits are any citrus, raspberries, strawberries, grapes, or pomegranates. Growers must then test the mandarins for optimal sugar and acid levels before harvesting to make sure they're tasty, which begins in the fall and continues through the spring. And they can't just be pulled from the tree as they would remove the top of the peel. Again, skilled in labor. Because California has multiple varieties and multiple growing regions when it comes to mandarins, we have an extended harvest. This is a big deal. We're a vending machine for fresh citrus. Got that? So there you have it. That's how mandarin oranges got from China to California to you. And while mandarin oranges and fresh citrus look great on a bowl on the counter, it's the worst way to store them. Keep them in a loosely closed bag in the fridge. Stored this way, I've had fresh lemons last up to six months. This works for most citrus. See you guys next time.